We have learned how to find the mean, the median, the mode, and the sample standard deviation for a group of data. What we're going to do now is learn how to do the same thing using the formula tab and the functions in the statistical book. And again, you can do this the same way on a PC and on a Mac. The first thing I would like to be able to do is the count. So when you're putting data in, you want to make sure that you have the same number that you were supposed to. Always make sure that you typed it in correctly. So we're going to go to the function, statistical function called count, and that will give us our sample size. We have the template here. It says value that we're going to highlight the data values that we have typed into our computer on the Excel spreadsheet. And that tells us we have 10 pieces of information. And we call that lowercase n because that is the sample size. The mean is another word for the statistical average. So we're going to calculate the average. Again, we go to formulas. We go to statistical functions. We go to average. We have the template here. We put in the first box, the numbers, the first row, the ages that we have collected. And you see the numbers there. And we notice that the average age is 25 and 59 hundredths of a year. Press on OK. And that gives us that information. Now we want to be able to calculate the median. Remember, the median tells us 50% of the ages are less than a particular number, and 50% of the ages are more than that particular number. A quick way of doing it is to create the formula where we're going to press our Equal button, type in the first couple of letters of the word, and when I click in MED, the median function returns. And what we notice is all we have to do is once again scroll down the column with our 10 pieces of data. If you want it to look a little nicer, you can put a parenthesis at the end. It's not necessary, though. And now we know that the 25 and 65 hundreds is the number in the middle. Notice that data does not appear. So that tells us that age, uh, half of the population is younger than 25 and 65 hundreds of a year. And 50% of the population is older than 25 and 65 hundredths of a year. So the median doesn't necessarily have to be a member of the group or one of the data points in the group. Now again, we want to calculate the mode. Looking at the numbers, it doesn't appear that there's a mode, but let's go through the process. Again, I'm going to type in MO for mode. And even if you go multiple modes, you're going to find out that it's on, the computer is only going to give you one. It returns the most frequently occurring or repetitive value in the array. So we click on that. Again, we scroll down this entire column. And we get number NA, which means there is none available. Finally, we want the sample standard deviation. And there are two of them. So when we type in, or actually let's go to the function so you can see it, statistical. And when we go to the standard deviation, you have stdev.p. That's the standard deviation for the population. So after the midterm, I will be able to send you a summary of the statistical analysis of your midterm grades. And I will use P because the entire class is the population. At this point, we have our sample. So we do standard deviation based upon a sample. So we click on that. And again, we are just going to put in the 10 ages that we have collected. And you notice that we're going to round it to the nearest thousands because you have many decimal digits after that. So I'm going to take this number, and I'm going to change it to the nearest thousands. So we go to the decimal, decrease decimal numbers. And we say the standard deviation is approximately 4 and 818 thousandths of a year. Well, I would like a little bit more information. So the information I want now in order to be able to go for the graphing is to find the maximum value, the minimum value. And I also would like to know the range of the numbers of our distribution. So again, for maximum, we can click in equals. MA, and notice the word max comes in. It's the largest value in the set. We double click. The function comes up. We scroll down the 
10 data points, and the maximum value is 32 and 2 tenths of a year. For the minimum value, we're going to go through the same process. We click equal for the function. We can type in MI, and MIN is the minimum value. Again, we input the 10 numbers into the formula, and we notice the minimum value is 17 and 7 tenths of a year. In order to be able to calculate the range, again, we're creating a formula. We have equals, and the range is equal to the maximum value, so we click on that, minus the minimum value, and that tells you there's a 14 and a half year difference between the youngest and the oldest person in our group. So we've collected a lot of information, and yet I would like to be able to classify whether this distribution is symmetric, uniform, skewed to the right, or skewed to the left. So in order to do that, I want to be able to create class intervals. So what we are going to put down now, since I want each interval to have a width of 5, is the finding out what is my first class, and I want to list its upper limit, only the upper limits. Since I want to start a little bit less than 17, I'm going to start with the upper limit of 15, and therefore I am going to go to equals the 15, which is the upper limit, plus the width of the class, which is going to be 5, and therefore the upper limit of the second group is 20. I want to scroll that a few more times till I get to the number that incorporates the 32 and 5 tenths, and therefore I have that information, and I can write down more, and that could give me more than the 35. Now I want to be able to determine how many of these ages go in these classes. Now when we use the frequency formula, we are going to be able to fill in this entire table. Again, just using the upper limits of the class. Now since we want to fill in a table, we're going to go to the function formula over here to insert the function. And the function we'd like to insert is called frequency, so we have equal frequency. And once I type in FREQ, frequency comes up. Now notice this entire column has been highlighted, so we cannot go just to one cell, we have to have the whole column. So we look at what it says, it says the data array, which means we're going to list all of the ages in our sample. We put down a comma so we can get to the next group, and the bins array actually means what is the upper limit of all the classes or all the bins. So again, we scroll from 15 to 35, and we have that information. And basically now I want to fill this entire sequence of numbers in this area. So in order to do that, what we have to do is type is press three buttons and I will type in the names of those. We press control and shift and enter. And that is filled. So again, remember, in order to fill that box, we're going to press Control plus Shift plus Enter, all at the same time, and that fills in the entire sequence. All right, now that we have that information, we're going to do this one more time where we're going to set up the actual classes and we want to set up the frequency. All right, now that we have that, I'm going to make it look pretty. Uh, give it a particular color, let's call it like that. We'll underline this, we'll put a side to that, and I'm going to go to a thick bottom border, and that looks a little bit nice. Maybe make this a little bit darker. Let's see what we can get here. All right, that looks better. And again, because the upper limit is 15, and I want the class width to be 5, counting backwards from 15, 5, so we have 15, 14, 13, 12, 11. So don't just subtract the 5 from the 15, we're going to put that in. Now, notice it's coming up as a date, which is very nice, except we don't need that.
So in order to be able to get this to be a little bit better, we're going to scroll down a few of these boxes, and now we want to format that not as custom but as text. That way the information we're going to input is the information we actually want. So we have 11 through 15. The lower limit is 11. 11 plus 5 is 16, so it's 16 through 20. 16 plus 5 is 21, so we have 21 to 25. 21 plus 5 is 26, so we have 26 to 30. And finally, 26 plus 1 is 31, so we have 31 through 35. And then we have more in case there was more there. For the frequency, we're going to type in the numbers. You cannot copy and paste since we filled in the entire sequence of numbers together. Now that we have this, we're going to highlight both columns, the classes and the frequency. We go to Insert. We go to Column. I'm going to make this a three-dimensional chart. Move this up so it's easier to see. And now we have our frequency distribution going from 0 through 4, since that's the largest frequency. And notice on top we have the chart tools, so that gives us an opportunity to perhaps change the color of the bars. But more importantly, we want a histogram because these numbers are continuous from 11 through 35. So we go to the chart design, and we click on this arrow. And this design over here, Layout 8, is going to give us the bars attached to make it look like a histogram. And now that we have this information, we can say that the distribution is skewed to the left. Since most of the information is at the end and very little is at the beginning, it's slightly skewed to the left and that gives us more information about the data that we collected.